Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dorfler here. It's been a few days since you last saw me, and I bet you're pretty bummed about that. Um, anyway, got one more week to go before I get to see your smiling faces in person. But until then, we are going to continue our uh, learning through Chapter 2. Hi, Kitty. Um, today is going to be a shortish video um, talking about acid nomenclature. And this video or this process of naming acids is going to be built upon how we named our ionic compounds. <clears throat> so one thing we need to remember is we are technically not dealing with ionic compounds because acids all deal with hydrogen and it's bonding with um non-metals or anions, okay? Hydrogen just simply plays the role of the cation in these types of bonds. Now, they do behave in certain aspects. Um, the, that means the, the acids and their types of bondings. They do behave in a somewhat similar fashion as ionic compounds. They both rely on charges, um, and they both what we call dissociate in solutions, which we'll talk about that later on in the year. But um, other than th that, there's really not a whole lot of similarities. So we're taking the concept of how we form formulas, how we form ionic compounds, and we're building off of what we did um, earlier in section seven, where we used rules to name them. Okay. So we're building off those rules from section seven. We're applying them to how we name acids. Let's start off here. Okay. First rule, any time that we have an anion, that ends in IDE. So for any time that we are dealing with, uh, essentially with an anion that is by itself, just an element, which that's 99.9% .9 of the time. And you're gonna see here today that there are some exceptions to that rule, but for the most part, when an ion is, or sorry, an anion is simply an element all by itself, it is the IDE ending. And so when we have, an acid compound that has the anion with the IDE ending, then we remove that IDE ending and replace it with IC acid right here, okay? But this is kind of a two-parter though. We then have to add the prefix hydro to it. So for instance, <clears throat> if we have chlorine, the anion form of chlorine would be chloride. IDE. So when we have hydrogen bonding with chlorine, again, hydrogen makes that one plus charge, gets in that first group. In chlorine having a negative one charge, when you do the whooping, you're going to have HCl as the formula. Anyway, <clears throat> you have chloride as the anion. Remove that IDE ending and add the prefix hydro and that IDE ending that you removed and replaced with IC acid. So you get hydrochloric acid. Let's look at um, the acid with hydrogen and bromine. Same thing as, same formula setup, if you will, for um, hydrochloric acid. So bromine is the um, gonna be the anion, that's bromide. Remove that IDE ending, replace it with IC acid, and add the prefix hydro, and you get hydrobromic acid. Continuing with the trend with iodine, iodine's anion form is iodide. Replace the IDE and um, change it with IC acid, prefix hydro, you get hydroiodic acid. Okay, so that's our first set of rules. Okay. And I'm using my little computer at home to do this. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. We have a couple more rules that we have to follow because we know that we saw that there were a couple different rules and ways we can name anions from the previous section. So, if we have an anion that ends with ITE, well, we remove that ITE and replace it with OUS acid. Okay. So going back to our really uh, thorough example from the section uh, seven, where we're talking about chlorate, okay, where we have chlorine and oxygen forming these four different types of anions here. 
Okay, so HClO would be, well, if we just take out, if we don't, um, you can't see that I'm covering the H here. Um, here, how about this? Pretend that that is not there. ClO minus is the chlorite anion, okay? <clears throat> I'm sorry, the hypochlorite anion. My apologies. Um, so anyway, since we have the hypochlorite anion, the ClO, we remove the ITE ending, replace with OUS acid, and we get hypochlorous acid. Now, this is where I got my tongue twisted. For our next one, if we just have chlorite, ClO2, then when it's an acid, again, we just remove the IETE, replace with OUS, and we get chlorous acid. So here we have hypochlorous and chlorous acid. Now, what happens if we have an anion that ends in ATE? Well, you probably already guessed it, but we have some changes that we're going to make here as well. Not a lot, though. So sticking with our um, chlorate for um, as our anion here, anytime we have an anion that ends in ATE, we replace the ATE with just simply IC acid. So again, if we imagine that, you know, for our time being here, just so we can envision those hydrons aren't there. Here we have the chlorate anion here, ClO3. Again, remove that eight ending, replace with IC acid, and you get chloric acid. In our last example here, if we have the uh, perchlorate ClO4 anion, we remove that ATE again and add IC acid. You have the perchloric acid. Okay. So you're not necessarily changing a whole lot in terms of the name. So really you're just kind of ending or changing the ending um, as well with a few of them, mostly with the IDE ones when you add the hydro, but everything else is just usually the ending of the anion's name. So again, we've got three rules when we come to naming acids. And we're going to do a lot of practice with this as the days come around. Um, we're going to do some practice right now. I'm going to be giving you a worksheet for you to work on, excuse me, um, when you're watching this video. And then most likely on Wednesday, the 14th, I'll be putting out a video, even though we're not, uh, you're not in school, I'll be putting out a video to kind of um, go over that worksheet along with you um, just so you can maybe check how you did yourself, okay? Let's look at some examples here. Now, I mentioned earlier that 99.9% um, .9 of the time when we have an, an anion with the IDE ending, it's simply just going to be <clears throat> an element by itself. So here's our 0.1% uh, or so where that doesn't necessarily ring true. We have an acid with the formula HCN, okay? First off, let's cover up the hydrogen. Whenever you're naming acids, cover up the hydrogen, okay? That hydrogen does not play a role in naming. It's all based off of the anion, okay? So that means we have the anion CN, and we can tell that it, CN simply has a minus one charge because if I erase, go back and erase this, the hydrogen does not have a um, subscript on it, okay? So therefore, it's got a plus one. The CN anion is a minus one, so they cancel each other out. The CN anion is known as cyanide, okay? Cyanide. And if you think about that, cyanide ends in IDE. So whenever we have something ending in IDE, we have to remove that IDE ending, add the prefix of hydro, and add the IC acid ending. So for the acid of HCN, we get hydrocyanic acid. Let's look at number, or number, letter B, HNO3. Okay, so again, imagine hydrogen is not there, and we have the NO3 anion, which that is the nitrate anion. Again, ATE ending on the nitrate anion. The ATE gets removed and replaced with the IC acid. So we get nitric acid for B. 
C, H2SO4. Again, we don't bother ourselves with, <clears throat> excuse me, with the hydrogen. We look at the anion, and it's SO4. SO4 is sulfate, and therefore ATE ending gets removed and replaced with IC acid. Now, here's the sulfur's the tricky one. Okay, anytime you're dealing with sulfate or sulfite, it gets a little tricky. A lot of people want to call it sulfic acid, and I can completely understand why they want to call it sulfic acid. Because you take away the ATE ending and replace it with IC acid, and then we're done. Well, sulfate plays by its own rules sometimes, okay? So it's not sulfic. I want you to get that in your head. It's not sulfic. It's sulfuric. So you get the whole word of sulfur in there, okay? I know it kind of throws us for a quick little loop, but just understand that it's sulfuric acid, not sulfic acid. I want you to say that to yourself, not sulfic acid. It is called sulfuric acid. Okay, I think I said that enough. And lastly, H2SO3. Okay, so now we have SO3. We have one less oxygen than the previous one. So according to our rules um, that we saw in section seven, that means that our ending is going to be the I-T-E ending, sulfite. Okay, so the I-T-E ending as we saw a slide or two ago, gets replaced with O-U-S acid. And again, you might want to call this sulfous acid, but that is not the case. Because again, we're still doing sulfur. It's sulfurous acid. Okay. So again, uh, SH2SO4 was sulfuric acid because it has the uh, sulfate A-T-E ending. H2SO3 is uh, sulfurous acid. The ITE gets removed, replaced with OUS acid. Okay. All right. I'm going to erase these here. And now we're going to go the other direction. Okay. We're going to go and try to guess the formula of the acid when we are given the name. So we have to look at the, we're taking the rules of the names for acids and going in reverse now. Okay. So. Let's look at A. Eh. Trying to write this here. Okay. Hydrobromic acid. <clears throat> All right. Let's look at things that we should be familiar with now. Okay. We have IC acid. I'm trying to draw a straight line, I promise. And we also have hydro beginning. When, according to the rules, would we use the prefix hydro? along with the IC acid ending. I want you to think about that for a second. If you want to pause the video, by all means, okay? Well, here's how you go about this. Again, we're gonna add the hydrogen and we're gonna do our famous method, okay? We got hydrogen as a plus one and well, we have bromine, as we can tell off this name, and bromine has formula of B R minus. So when we whoop these down, I'm really trying to whoop. Okay. And the reason why I know it's just purely bromine. Okay. And not a um, polyatomic ion or anything like that is because we have the prefix hydro and the ending of IC acid. That means that my anion had the IDE ending, which would mean it's like, again, like I said, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's just going to be the element. Okay. So I've done my whooping that you see right here as best you can see it. And we get the formula H B R. Excuse me. So that is the formula for hydrobromic acid. And if you have a steel trap for our brain, we start off our discussion today with an example of hydrobromic acid. All right, we're on to B here, the last one. And we have carbonic acid. So again, we gotta look at clues here. So let's look at the name, carbonic acid, no prefix, okay? So our ending is simply just IC acid. So when do 
we have, when do we use the ending of IC acid? Well, again, if you're on a pause of the video now and go back or think about it for yourself to figure this out, go ahead. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and solve this. So again, we have hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen's plus one. So then we got to look at our anion here. Anytime they have an IC acid ending, that means that our anion had an A-T-E ending. And so, sorry, I just had to give the look a parent gives to their child when they're interrupting. Anyway, back to what I was doing. IC acid, that's the only thing we have on here. Therefore, the anion had an A-T-E ending. And that would mean that we are using the carbonate anion, so a polyatomic ion. So if you look at your carbonate formula, CO3 2 minus, oh, let me rewrite that. That's supposed to be a 2 minus charge. There we go. That's close enough. All right. So CO3 2 minus is the carbonate formula and charge. And we're going to do our whooping here. The 2 is going to go and our little one's going to go, whoop, okay, exactly, my cat's mocking me with my sound. And so when we do our formula, we get H2CO3. So there you have it. That is the formula for carbonic acid. You want to say hi to everybody? Huh? Want to say hi to everybody? This is Asher. He's a big baby. Anyway, sorry. Okay, go out, clouds. So, those are the simple rules for adding, or uh, sorry, creating um, formulas and names of acids. Okay, you got to be able to be flexible and use these uh, rules multiple ways. But again, it all gets built off of Section Seven rules. So, if you are still struggling with that, go back to Section Seven get those rules, you know, rehearsed to the point where you are having dreams of them. Um, anyway, um, that's it for, for today's lesson. Um, I will be finishing off section eight later on this week when we're talking about binary compounds. There's something else that I also have to uh, discuss with you regarding binary compounds. Okay. It's nothing real difficult. It's just, there's an added little thing that we typically don't talk about until later on. Um, in the year, but I need to make sure I mention it um, before we talk about that. So you can expect that video, I think, on Thursday. Okay. Again, um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. You should be getting this uh, video alongside of your worksheet of acid names and formulas. Wednesday, like I said, I will be posting a video discussing that worksheet. All right. Um, I may even come up with some other plan for that. I, I'm not 100% certain yet because uh, I'm kind of just playing off the side of my hip right now. So anyway, uh, I'm going to end the video there. And hopefully this uh, helps you out a lot. And maybe I can actually get my computer to work. Um, anyway. Okay, it's gone. So anyway, I'm going to leave you at it. I'm going to go and uh, drink some more Gatorade. And I will see everybody next time. Have a good one.